Hey Steve here and welcome to this next video in the series of uh, processing subscriber images. This image that we're looking at on the screen right now has been sent to me from Harry Shulman who uh, sent this in and he said that he processed this image himself uh, but was a bit concerned he'd overdone the pinks. So he sent it in and I'm going to take a look now and see, uh, you know, just, I haven't seen Harry's original edit so you know I'm just going to take my approach to processing this image as if it was mine and see where it leads us. So um, yeah, where we are at the moment, I've just opened this, uh, the raw file in Camera Raw, or I've opened it in Photoshop and it's opened in the Camera Raw plugin first. Uh, and I can see the sky obviously is quite bright. The, uh, the, the reflection of the sky is nice and dark uh, with lots of detail in the foreground. So that's not an issue. What we need to do, however, is just um, yeah, because we've only got the one exposure I need to see if we've got that detail in the sky and a quick way of doing that is either to just slide the exposure slider down or the highlights in camera raw so we can see with the exposure slider there is a you know we have got some image data in there I think highlights though might bring that back uh, in a bit more of a pleasing way and uh, maybe the whites as well we can pull the whites down and um, yeah, we can see the histogram at the top here hasn't sort of clipped any highlights now so all the image data appears to be there so this is probably a good starting point to kick off the process in Photoshop uh, in terms of exposure I will just have a little play around with the temperature slider though just to see what looks best because obviously with such a fiery sky there's going to be a pink glow to the scene um, so you know we're not going to get there's no such thing as really a correct white balance but I'm just going to slide this up and down and see what looks best to me in my eye so actually I don't know where it was <laughs> originally now so 5650 so uh, it's probably not too far off of being correct I, you know, I don't want to go too far to the right that's going to go too warm I think maybe just pulling it back into the blues a little bit um, and then the green as well we'll just we'll, we'll pull back from the purples a little bit there into the green end and um, yeah let's open this in Photoshop now so I'm going to click open image and it will take just a second to open up in Photoshop so this is uh, you know this image that's got a lot of potential I think uh, we're not going to be able to do too much in terms of affecting the color um, so really we're just going to be bringing out the best bits of the image bringing out the detail and focusing the view on probably this sort of rock slash uh, river bank or I'm not quite sure what you'd call it but you yeah, know this this rocky outcrop here with a couple of trees on it uh, this is probably going to be the focal point uh, for the shot because we really do need to have something to focus on um, but with that said we'll see if we can lift some of the shadows over here in the uh, in the trees as well um, I think it's okay that the trees are silhouetted in the water here that kind of makes sense that they would be uh, silhouetted because the reflection is always going to be darker than the sky anyway um, so yeah let's let's just see what we can do with the exposure here uh, so yeah this is going to be basically an exercise in pulling out detail of shadows and then just massaging the uh, the light around the image to draw focus to this rock here and potentially reduce focus from other parts of the shot so let's let's have a look at the shadows first so we can create a luminosity selection to isolate those shadows uh, let's use the panel here so um, in the luminosity selection section of my uh, panel which if you haven't got that yet you can uh, download it using the buttons below this video there's, uh, there's some links below the video uh, you can get the panel for just 97 Australian dollars at the moment uh, let's turn the previews on um, yeah you go and on top of that if uh, if you haven't got the panel or you don't want to get the panel everything that I'm about to show you here with the luminosity selections is is doable um, without the panel uh, the only thing is you have to basically learn the uh, you know, the manual way of creating these uh, selections and masks 
so you know hopefully with me showing you the what's uh, you know what to do um, you know either you can use the panel for the how or you can uh, you know figure out the luminosity masking stuff which I also handily have a course on if you wanted to if you wanted to go that route so um, yeah with that said let's move on uh, so I'm going to create a selection here that isolates the uh, the shadows so that's that's pretty good um, what we're looking at here is a preview where the whitest parts of this preview are the darkest parts of the shot so we're just using the preview to check that we've got enough isolation between the shadows and the background so this looks okay let's use this load it as a, a selection by clicking use mask and actually I've gone uh, I'll cancel this uh, command D deselect um, I've jumped ahead a step actually uh, so let's <laughs> let's start off by adding an adjustment that's going to increase those shadows or increase the brightness of those shadows so we've got a light uh, section here and when we expand that we can see some uh, shortcuts to some curve adjustments here that are going to lighten the image for us so if we just add one of those and then um, yeah and then just adjust it we can pull the shadows out of here quite nicely uh, so obviously we don't want this effect across the whole image so we'll invert the mask command or control I turn it black and now we can go back to the luminosity selections create a preview we can accept the preview by clicking use mask and now we can take a white brush into these shadows to uh, to brighten them up basically revealing this brightening layer so if I press command H then those marching ants will get out of the way and we can actually see what we're doing and so as I'm brushing through here you can see those trees are just brightening up quite nicely and only the shadows uh, you know if I if I accidentally brush over into the sky then we're not brightening the sky there because the luminosity selection is active so that's really handy okay now with that adjustment applied or with that mask in place now we can adjust this further if we want just to brighten it up don't want to go too far because we're going to lose too much contrast over here I think but that looks uh, that looks like a good adjustment for our first adjustment um, so just pulling the shadows out there now what can we do next so let's just see before we get too far with everything else let's see what we can do to uh, to the sky here just to see if there's any more detail we can pull back um, in those in those brightest parts of the clouds uh, to do this let's try let's just try a regular curves adjustment drag the curve downwards to darken um, okay that looks okay let's invert the mask now so we've hidden this adjustment and now so that we can brush this darkening effect in without brushing over into the trees let's load a, uh, a highlight selection in the luminosity selections section of the panel um, okay this one will probably do us click use mask and let's brush this in so it's just gradually getting darker probably not seeing each individual brush stroke because it's quite subtle but yeah there we go if you want to be subtle and do do things gradually just because it sort of creates a more refined finished image uh, so I'll deselect the selection now command D or control D just so that I can brush this into the bottom of the foreground as well so what I'm doing here is <clears throat> excuse me uh, what I'm doing here is uh, darkening the top and the bottom and then brightening the middle a little bit so that we kind of bring focus to the middle because you know that's where we want the eye to go to first okay that'll do us for that adjustment now to make this rock stand out I think we need to add a bit of contrast so let's use my uh, panel again so under the light section we've got some contrast adjustments 
Let's just choose levels one for now. That gives us a good starting point. And then we can just adjust this a bit further. Just concentrating only on what it's doing to the rock in the middle here. I think that looks pretty good. So let's invert the mask. And just without any luminosity selections active at all, we can just brush in here to reveal this effect. Let's see what that does for the image. It's pretty good. Okay, zoom out just to see how this looks from a distance. All right, let's see uh, what some further contrast adjustments can do for us. Let's look this time. Oh, that's really starting to pop actually in the middle there. Um, I think we can. I think we can use this through the middle. Um, just deciding whether to mask it in or out based on what we've got. Yeah, I think I will invert the mask so we're hiding this effect. And now I'll create a selection to isolate the shadows. I want to create a good uh, a good isolation between the trees and the sky this time. Okay, that looks good. Um, and then also we want to um, include the rock here this time. So we can actually modify this preview directly in the preview mode. Uh, so I can just take a white brush here and just brush through here. And it's going to, um, you know, it's going to sort of take this into account when I accept the preview and use the mask. So let's do that. Click use mask. And now Command H to hide marching ants, and we've got the white brush selected. And we can just start brushing through the middle here, and this effect is going to be revealed. Whilst keeping it out of the sky. So that's, that's how that looks. Let's just bring it in a bit more up here and around the sides. Okay, I think we're in business. So let's uh, let's just remind ourselves what this looked like from the start, and now where we are. So again, really only subtle differences. Uh, it's not like a massive transformation, but considering how much this image really is on fire to begin with, and how much color and vibrance the shot has got, it only really needs those subtle refinements to turn it into like a finished image. So um, yeah, like I said, we've we've done a bit of work to pull the shadows out, uh, you know, pull the details out in the shadow, and we've made this rock in the middle here, the kind of the focal point of the shot, just by brightening it and increasing the contrast. And yeah, to be honest, I'm not really sure there's much more needs doing to this one. Um, you know, maybe some uh, dodging and burning to sort of highlight some of the edges of this, this rock. Uh, let's see if we can do that. So in the panel, we have the finishes section and there's a shortcut here to a 50% gray layer which you can just use a black and white brush into to, uh, to dodge and burn. So you can use a white brush just to brush into the lighter edges and then switch to a black brush and, and brush into the darker edges and that kind of creates some separation between those edges and gives the illusion of a 3D kind of effect. So darkening dark edges of an object and then brightening the opposite edge. Yeah, this is just the sort of the real fine tuning, uh, or the real fine tune adjustments that you can make to uh, to make certain objects kind of stand out. Uh, I'm just really doing a really quick version here. Um, probably spend a lot more time if this was a shot that I was actually working on for myself. Um, but really the purpose here is just to give you the idea of 
what you can, uh, you know, techniques that you can use. Uh, and then maybe brighten some of these trees a little bit just to make them stand out a bit more. Let's see the effect that that's had. Yeah, it's quite nice. I think, um, yeah, that's had the desired effect. And uh, yeah, we're probably, well, we're only 15 minutes in, but you know, I think that's a testament to the to the image and that we've kind of reached this point this quickly. Um, yeah, I think that probably wraps this demonstration up. So hopefully, uh, yeah, as always, hopefully there's been a lesson or two in here for you that you've been able to pick up. And speaking of picking things up, if you wanna pick up a copy of my luminosity masking panel, as I said uh, at the start of the video, uh, there'll be a link or a button below this video where you can get the panel and download it for 97 Australian dollars. And uh, yeah, you can you know once you once you process your order and payment is received, uh, you'll you know receive an email within minutes with your login details to the members area where you can download the panel. And then there's installation instructions to help you install it. And um, yeah, then you'll be ready to go with the panel and luminosity masking will never have been easier or quicker to do. So uh, yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll speak to you next time. Cheers.